This is your Venus in Sagittarius. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nina. I'm a Western tropical astrologer and certified life coach. To book a reading or a session with me, you can go to ninabastrology.com. But today we are continuing on with the Venus series, this time with Venus in Sagittarius. But before we get into all of the nitty gritty of what it is to be a Venus in Sagittarius, I just want to remind you that this is a general interpretation of a placement. There's so much more that makes your Venus in Sagittarius unique to you and fit into your chart. And if you want some more information on the nuances that may be affecting your Venus in Sagittarius, you can check out my Aspects to Venus video right here. Not only that, but I do plan on expanding upon my Aspects to Venus video and making it an entire series once I'm done with this Venus placement series, in which I'll be making a video for Venus Aspects to the Sun, Venus Aspects to the Moon, Venus Aspects to Mars, all that good stuff to just get even more detailed and richer with the ways that Venus might be impacted in your chart based on aspects. Of course, the most nuanced interpretation that you can possibly get of your Venus is by booking a reading, which you can do so at ninobeastrology.com. But let's get into it. So Venus in Sagittarius is interesting. I've been talking a lot throughout this series about different Venus placements being in their domicile or in their detriment, all that good stuff. And Venus in Sagittarius doesn't fit into any one of those categories. It's sort of a free agent in that way. But it's interesting because of its relationship to the other Venus placements that do fall into one category or another on the spectrum of exalted to debilitated. Specifically, Venus in Sagittarius squares both Venus in Pisces, which is Venus in its exaltation, and Venus in Virgo, which is Venus in its fall. So judging by that position that it holds, it's confusing to see like, is Venus in Sagittarius a quote unquote good placement for Venus or is it sort of against what Venus represents? Then you look at Venus in Sagittarius's relationship to Venus in its domicile positions. It is in conjunct Venus in Taurus, Venus in Taurus's domicile, and it is sextile Venus in Libra. Then you look at it in relationship to Venus in its detriment, and it is trine Venus in Aries and doesn't have any relationship with Venus in Scorpio. So if we just look at Venus in Sagittarius and try to assess it based on its relationships with these other Venus signs, we see that the strongest relationship that it has is with Venus in Aries, having a trine with Venus in Aries. So Venus in Aries being in its detriment, that isn't a very promising indication to the health of Venus in Sagittarius as a placement. But in general, that's not a very strong argument to draw off of. It definitely isn't a hook, line, and sinker indication that Venus in Sagittarius is an unhealthy placement for Venus. But it is always interesting to look at both Venus in Sagittarius and Venus in Gemini as sort of in this limbo, both squaring the most opportune placement for Venus and the most debilitated placement for Venus. It's also interesting to note that Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter also rules Pisces or co-rules Pisces in modern astrology. And Venus in Pisces is exalted. But what you're getting with Sagittarius being ruled by Jupiter versus Pisces being ruled by Jupiter is the masculine side of Jupiter versus the feminine side of Jupiter because Sagittarius is a masculine, sign and Pisces is a feminine sign. Now Jupiter is a very exciting planet. It is symbolic of prosperity, of abundance, and it translates into the sign of Sagittarius as having a really optimistic mindset, having a broad sense of perspective, being very open, valuing freedom, and also valuing seeking the truth. One of the key phrases about the sign of Sagittarius in general is be careful of having too much of a good thing. And you'll see that translated into 
the interpretation of Venus in Sagittarius. There is so much good in Venus in Sagittarius, so much that is promising and exciting and bountiful. And where you get into the pitfalls of Venus in Sagittarius is just having too much of a good thing. Let's start with this idea of perspective and opportunity that Sagittarius embodies. When you put those qualities into the Venus sign, the placement that has to do with what you value and how you love, a Venus in Sagittarius is going to see relationships and love as an opportunity, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to connect, and an opportunity even to expand expand their horizons. So relationships with Venus and Sagittarius can be extremely exciting and stimulating. As a Venus in Sagittarius, you're likely also looking for that excitement and stimulation through your relationships. It's also worth noting that most if not all, I mean, it's, you can't say anything too black and white. So most like, I don't know a single Sagittarius Venus who does not look at their Sagittarius Venus placement as being an incredible asset, something that they enjoy about themselves, and definitely not something that hinders them, that puts them at a disadvantage when seeking love or that in their mind creates problematic behaviors in love. Venus in Sagittarius typically has a very optimistic idea or view of love and a very optimistic view of their own worth, of their own value. Again, Sagittarius trines Aries. So with this Venus placement, there's likely going to be a strong sense of self-esteem and a way in which the principles or the values of Venus and Sagittarius are quite complementary to Venus and Aries, for example, are where Venus and Aries very much cares about individuality, which sometimes can be very counterintuitive to the Venus placement. Venus and Sagittarius very much cares about freedom within relationships, which can arguably also be somewhat contradictory to the commitment focus that we tend to associate with Venus and romantic relationships in general. Because of that, Venus and Sagittarius natives might not be necessarily on board with the typical culture of commitment oriented relationships if they have in their mind that that puts their sense of freedom at risk and not even like their sense of freedom as in their individual sense of freedom their ability to be free individuals but even their ability to continue to explore other relationships to continue to be free in the way that they interact with and connect with other people. Again, Sagittarius is about expansion. It's about perspective and in that sort of variety. So Venus and Sagittarius can very much be attracted to continuing to expand their relationships, continuing to have the freedom to meet with and even fall in love with or express love with whomever they feel feel that spark with, whomever they feel that connection with. And if they are under the impression or life has proven to them in whatever way that by being in a committed relationship, they will have to limit the way that they express themselves in relationships of all kinds, that they will limit their almost like impulses to connect with or follow their sparks that they might feel with other people, then that might lead them to feel that committed relationships aren't for them. Although it's never as black and white as that. You'll find Venus and Sagittarius's who manage to have very healthy, open relationships, find commitment in a partner, but also maintain that freedom to explore other connections. Or you can find Sagittarius Venuses who are very much driven to be monogamous and commitment oriented in that way, but also find that they are very social and are able to explore connections with other people and feel free to be social uh, without 
having those connections that they have with other people be romantic or sexual. It really depends on whatever else is influencing that Venus in Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius also does have a reputation for being uh, somewhat righteously indignant. Like I said, Sagittarius is about truth seeking. So it can be the case that people with Venus in Sagittarius or some people with Venus in Sagittarius find that their values are the right values. That in the values that they have cultivated, they have found truth and sort of assigning their perspective specifically perhaps on love and relationships or other values that they hold, they have found the one and only truth of life, especially if they feel like they particularly need to counter the dominant culture of monogamy or commitment or whatever, because they feel like that is infringing upon their freedom. They can double down and become righteously indignant of their views and opinions on, uh, I mean, so many things, because the values that we find in our Venus placement extend beyond our values in love and relationships. It's our core values. So if a Venus in Sagittarius perhaps finds that there is a dominant culture in general that is infringing on their freedom or on their beliefs, they might double down and get righteously indignant about what they believe. And that's a, an interesting thing is beliefs and values can sometimes be used interchangeably with a Venus in Sagittarius. But the difference truly of values and beliefs, if we look at the model of, you know, Taurus rules values and Sagittarius rules beliefs, and these two signs are on completely different pages, they are in conjunct. Values is about what's personal to you and beliefs are more associated with your opinions on how the world works. And so with Venus and Sagittarius, those two things sometimes can feel like they're interchangeable in the native's mind. A pitfall of the sign of Sagittarius in general is this idea of future faking, of focusing so much on what isn't present. Because Sagittarius has so much to do with broad, expansive perspectives, there is a shadow side to that of constantly looking too far ahead having too wide of a perspective, perhaps having the feeling of the grass is greener on the other side, or happiness will be achieved once I reach this point just beyond the horizon. Pair that with an innate sense of optimism, and that's where you really get future faking, this idea of like heralding up this one day my prince will come, or one day things will be perfect and things will be happy. But sort of that point, like the horizon, is always constantly moving farther and farther away. So how this can manifest in a Venus sign in the way that Venus and Sagittarius interacts with relationships can be doing this very much in relationships, either making big promises or big plans, um, even related to commitment, like one day when we're married, this is what life is gonna be like, and or even just like signing checks that you can't cash, right? Like saying, oh, I'm gonna take you to Hawaii and we're going to live a luxurious lifestyle vacation and we're gonna do this, this, and this, and this, making all these promises in relationships where likely you have the very best intentions and also a very big desire to follow through on these promises, but you know, this is the sign that comes before Capricorn. There might not be that same attention paid to what steps need to be taken in order to get to that vacation, get to that proposal, get to that marriage. There's nothing inherently manipulative about it, but it can be a very disappointing behavior to the partners of a Sagittarius Venus when there's all of this promising, even over promising, and not a lot of follow through on their commitments. Similarly, someone with a Venus in Sagittarius might have this undying optimism towards their partners or like that ability to take in this these over promisings from other people and 
have the the eternal optimism that it will actually happen. They will one day just have enough money to get us to that vacation, or they will finally be in a place where they feel stable enough to propose or whatever the case may be. Again, it's one of those things of too much of a good thing. If you have too much optimism, which is a lovely thing, then you might constantly be sticking around for the sake of one day, for the sake of in the future, it will be like this without necessarily paying attention to, is this present really what I want to deal with? And considering, you know, if nothing changed from how the relationship is right now, would I want to continue on in this relationship? Because for the Venus and Sagittarius, it might be very easy to be like, well, things are going to change. All of these promises were laid out. Or even like if you're just inherently optimistic, you're more likely to have that belief that of course, one day money can just fall from the sky and we'll be able to have that trip out to Hawaii or whatever. Someone with a Capricorn Venus is perhaps not as likely to have this uh, belief that money can one day just fall from the sky. And in a relationship, they're much more likely to proceed forward based on solid evidence, right? And neither one is right or wrong because it actually might be the case with Sagittarius Venus or with enough optimism in general that money can just fall from the sky and with a strong sense of belief can come a strong ability to manifest. But it is something worth considering if you have a Venus in Sagittarius, how much on like a sliding scale, how much is your hope in a relationship or in a person based on evidence and how much is it based on promises that historically have not been fulfilled or if you're the one who perhaps tends to over promise it's worth being transparent with your partner making sure that you're getting on the same page of i i don't have even step one of being able to propose to you i don't know when step one is going to come but i want this and i'm optimistic that if we were to get together that it would be a, a lovely relationship or whatever just being as transparent as possible but this actually sort of leads me into the next point that i did want to bring up with venus in sagittarius which is their potential attachment style. Now I do have, you know, a running theory <laughs> or a running hypothesis that each Venus sign can be associated with one of the four major attachment styles. I definitely don't want to give the impression that you having a particular Venus sign is going to be a uh, sure marker that you have that particular attachment style because again it all is very dependent on other influences on venus and your birth chart but with the way that sagittarius in general is very future oriented optimistic also enjoys freedom and can have a little bit of trouble with maintaining presence also with the fact that the totem for sagittarius is the centaur and Boy oh boy, centaurs can run away fast, <laughs> run away from things, run away from feelings, and Sagittarius is a masculine sign, it's a more logical sign. It stands to reason that Sagittarius might generally be associated with an avoidant attachment style. Might not be as in tune with their emotions, but also might not have as high of levels of anxiety when it comes to connecting with others because there's such an enjoyment of their own freedom of their own company and their own ability to do whatever they want there's likely not going to be as much anxiety of oh i need this person to like me i need this person to connect with me i need this person to 
make me feel secure. There can be a, perhaps a certain sense of I don't need anyone. And the principle of like, I don't need anyone can still fall into the realm of secure attachment, but it might also get into the area of actually avoiding strong bonds with other people, avoiding that intimacy with other people, avoiding vulnerability. And that avoidance is coming from some sort of relational trauma, even like little t trauma instead of capital T trauma of feeling like you can't get your needs met by other people for whatever reason, whether it was just a certain amount of negligence that led you not to feel like you felt safe expressing yourself, expressing your vulnerability, expressing intimacy or being in a vulnerable position in relationships that makes you maybe avoid those situations. Or if it's something a bit more heavy handed, you know, being in a position of having been vulnerable or shown an amount of intimacy and been betrayed. And then obviously you're gonna want to avoid situations like that. Of course, I'm not diagnosing, I'm not qualified to diagnose in any way, especially just based off of one placement in your birth chart. But I think the poetry there stands to reason, you know, that Sagittarius Venus isn't necessarily very anxious to attach or gain approval from others and might even be more avoidant of commitment, more avoidant of intimacy. And that's also something that can make someone constantly put their dreams of a relationship in the future, put their goals of connection in the future. Like one day I'll do this. Like I want this, but one day. I want to get married, I want to settle down, but one day, you know? It's too suffocating, it's too scary at the moment. But ideally, I like the idea of it. I like the idea of getting married, or I like the idea of actually committing, of settling down. I like the idea of going to Hawaii. Although for some reason, I do feel like a Venus in Sagittarius is more likely to follow through on the promise of going to Hawaii because like travel is still very much a Sagittarius realm and arguably travel is a good way to escape from deeper issues or uh, deeper vulnerability or deeper intimacy. It's a, a shiny thing that can distract and excite. So yeah. And then also when it is a bit more intimidating or suffocating, this idea of connecting intimately, of being vulnerable and opening up emotionally in relationships, another way, another outlet to have those emotions that are still very much present in an avoidant type of person or someone with a more avoidant attachment style, I should say, is through sex, is through that passionate connection in which there doesn't necessarily need to be a very vocal expression of intimacy, but that passion can still be released and emotion can still be released without needing to get too deep or even truly understand the emotions fueling the passion, fueling the need for release. This is another trait that you see with people with an avoidant attachment style, people who have very high sex drives and a very strong desire to connect in a passionate, even like non-verbal way, uh, in a sexual way, but who don't express as much of the emotional intimacy and emotional vulnerability. And that's also something that might translate for a Venus in Sagittarius, being a more masculine Venus sign, being a fire sign, so obviously being very passionate. How you love can be in a very sexual way, in a very passionate way in that. And also, if you need a lot of that kind of release, you might not be able to contain that to one person. You might not be able to commit to one person on that. You might feel that you can't have your freedom to widely connect on impulse with whomever you feel sexually attracted to. And that's another reason why commitment or monogamy could be, it could feel suffocating to a Venus in Sagittarius is if they need that sexual release because they're compensating for an avoidance of their 
deeper emotions. So that's another way that you can see a difficulty of the Sagittarius Venus is having too much of a good thing. Because of course, like that sort of passionate physical release is a great thing. It's good for your health. It feels good. There might not be anything that feels better. <laughs> it's evolutionarily programmed to be like the best feeling in the world. And the hard stuff is really opening up and getting honest and emotionally intimate and putting yourself in a state of vulnerability. So it's not even like too much of a good thing versus not enough of a bad thing, but um, too much of an easy thing even, and not enough of a hard thing. So all of this is really dependent on how exactly Venus and Sagittarius is showing up on your chart. But in general, to summarize, Venus and Sagittarius can be very fun, very passionate. Freedom can be a huge value and you can feel a lot of excitement in having the freedom to connect to so many different people. There's an optimism in relationships, likely a, a big sense of confidence in the way that you view yourself, a charisma there, an ability to connect to all different kinds of people, and also a huge ability to learn from relationships. Not in like a Scorpio, like this is a karmic lesson that you gotta learn through relationships, but in a like light Sagittarius way of, you know, being involved with so many different kinds of people that you broaden your perspective of the world and broaden your understanding of yourself as well and your understanding of your value. Of course, things to be wary of are how much is your direction of passion in relationships steering you away from facing unresolved emotional needs or unresolved emotional attachments, unresolved emotions in general, the need for emotional intimacy. How much are you missing out on the strength of vulnerability by having so much fun in relationships. And it's also worth taking note of whether you are so gung-ho on your values being the truth, the universal truth, that you're overlooking where you might be falling short, especially because sometimes it can be difficult for a Sagittarius Venus to follow through on their commitments in relationships or even face the present situation that you are in in a relationship and not holding out so much detrimental hope that it will get better or that promises that have been promised will be fulfilled. But that is all I have to say about Venus in Sagittarius. If you are a Venus in Sagittarius, I would love to know how this resonated with you. I hope that it was beneficial. I hope that it was insightful. And do stay tuned to this channel by subscribing if you are interested in catching my new upcoming series on aspects to Venus. But of course, if you need a little something to tie you over, I do have that video already posted of aspects to Venus. That's just a little briefer than what I plan to do in the future. Although, hey, this video doesn't expire. You could be watching this in 2025 and my whole series on aspects to Venus can already be out. <laughs> That's very Sagittarius of me, thinking of the future, getting a broader perspective than just this moment. <laughs> okay, well, that's all that I have for you for today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day or night, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.